Hey everybody, welcome to Kate Did Rocks. During our recent trip to Oregon, we had the opportunity to stop in Kennewick, Washington and work with a man who has nearly 60 years experience in the lapidary field. It's a fascinating conversation. Come along. Allow me to introduce Michael Zinsky. Mr. Zinsky is a retired engineer living in Kennewick, Washington. He is 82 years old and he has been faceting for nearly 60 years. He's truly one of a kind. I'm trying to get more people to realize that they have the creativity within them and to sit down and give it a try. They might be surprising themselves of what they can actually do. So how did you get interested in faceting? Yeah, years ago, I, when I was 19, I got married. At 21, I was ready for the draft, found out she was pregnant. So in 62, she had twins. Woo. In 64, she died in UCLA of primary pulmonary hypertension. Well, one of the times we went to visit out over from the San Fernando Valley over into the Antelope Valley, there was a little rock shop in Mint Canyon. Stopped off in there and I saw this nice rocks and everything. Something caught my eye behind his counter he had a spotting light and he had a Montana sapphire that was cabbed and a beautiful star in it. That caught my eye and got my interest. After she passed away, I moved in with my parents with my identical twin daughters and my mother helped me take care of the kids. And I took up the hobby. The first thing I got was the little star diamond combo unit started cabbing Montana Sapphire. Back then they didn't have diamond grinding wheels, so I was like rubbing two sticks together to do a Montana <laughs> they Sapphire. They used to have to have it was like rubber with kind of a powder on it or something? They didn't even have that. What did you use? A silicon carbide grinding wheel. Oof. And sand and silicon carbide sandpaper. Terrible way to have to, to work on a stone. But I got a few nice little stars and everything. And then I noticed the lapidary show, so I went to that and faceting. So I went down to Marie O'Brien Lapidary in East Hollywood and I bought a machine, some preforms, took them home, uh, cut a couple of them. The second one turned out good, went back. She nearly threw me out of the shop because I didn't come back for faceting lessons and said, well, <laughs> here you go. And I bought more preforms. I've been faceting ever since. And you were 24 at that point? 25 at that point. So at that point, why well, I was doing both cabbing and faceting. And I went from an O'Brien faceting machine to a MDR and then later on to an Ultratech. In uh, 1968, I went to work for Crystallite, Pacific Test Specialty. They were the first one to make the metal bonded diamond wheel, electroplated nickel. I ended up actually doing the plating and making the laps later on while we're working there. And I used to demo the Pro Diamond Demon and the ringleader at shows all over the United States whenever he booked a show there. Did you just, was it like by accident you happened into do, working for the diamond plating people or was that oh, because you were interested in it? A, this was a funny one. I had working at RCA Aerospace, working on the, the launch computer for the Saturn V. One of my coworkers, he and I, went to Vegas. They had a rock show going on there. We went to Vegas and I had just bought, because now I'm faceting, I had bought a nice bag of topaz crystals from Mexico. I'm walking around in there and I come across this one stand, fellow sitting there, he's faceting and I'm looking at it. He has two or three people watching and he's cutting a piece of glass. Standing behind him was another fellow. This man that was doing the fasting was Dick Foley the, of the Roadrunner Lapidary Rock Shop, and he do, sold at all the shows. I said, well, here. And I reached in the bag and I pulled out a big hunk of topaz and said, here, cut this. Dick looked at Jack Greenspan and said, 
they set me up. They said, no, you do it. At this point, all the laps out there that you were using for fastening was either a steel or it was copper. You sprinkled the diamond on it and then you rolled it, pushed it in with a steel roller. Very slow, very messy and contamination wise and everything. You had to watch everything you did. I sat down to this thing. They dopped it all up for me and sat me down and I started cutting. You can imagine, it's like getting in an old broken down car that just barely moves and getting into a brand new Cadillac or, or a Rolls Royce and it's roaring. The difference between the old method and this new method that they were just introducing was night and day. I sat there. I had crowds three deep around watching me. I was bubbling over because I had never seen or experienced anything like that. Right after the, I had completed it, people kept coming back to see it completed, and I had completed it, and they put it on display there. Uh, Dick Foley and it says, uh, this man wants to see you. Well, I ended up demoing a couple of shows, faceting machines, for Jack Greenspan of Crystallite. RCA, we all went out on strike there because of union problems there with the company. I had no place to go, nothing to do, no work, and I needed some work. And so Jack Greenspan said, well, come to work for me. So in 68, I went to work for him and worked with him, for him, up until 77 when I came down with severe chronic nickel poisoning. Oh no, from the wheels? From the plating of the wheels. Because did they not have proper safety equipment? We, is it? Back then they didn't know anything about all of that and the fumes and everything. And in fact, the toxicologist that examined me said, and look at my blood samples and everything, he said, you could have drank that stuff and not get that bad. During all this time, in the shop, I would plate and make the discs that everybody's using even today. I've got some here that were made way back when. They're still good. I demonstrated at the Tucson shows, the Phoenix shows, the Lincoln, Nebraska, the Washington, D.C., the Seattle, all over the place with Jack Greenspan. We went, had a van. We'd take a big supply of the laps and machinery and stuff with us to those shows to supply the dealers in the show to the customers. We never sold retail. So all that time I had a chance to meet all the various people, rows of rows, reciprocal lap, the, the vibro lap, uh, Dick Foley. Uh, I knew the owner of uh, the Spencer Opal Mine. I knew Howard Stanley, because I demonstrated his machine at a couple shows, inventor of the Ultratech. So I got exposure around, but I got to meet so many different people. I have a book over there of uh, the Passage Gems by uh, a very famous couple. It's been, yes. Jim has a copy of that book. He's been like, uh, he's been pouring yeah. over it. They signed it off. Oh, that's fantastic. Good went to work for Generous Motors, as we called it. Uh, went to work for General Motors until uh, 92, and uh, then retired from then on. All during all those years, I had people wanting to learn how to facet. I was uh, faceting in my dining room <laughs> to a lot of people that wanted to learn. I've been in the hobby all these years. I've demoed, I now demo at the clubs, lo local clubs here within at least 50 miles to 80 miles area, if they ask me, and they have. And I'll, I've got this workshop and all the newbies, they want to come and learn, I'm here. Well, so how many people do you think you've taught how to facet? At least a hundred. Really? Or more. That's and a lot of sparkly of stones. And a lot of them have become teachers themselves and passed on the knowledge. Well, that's fantastic. And that's basically what I'm after is it's a fantastic hobby. And to 
create something out of just nothing, even if it's a piece of glass, just a, a, a broken bottle or something, bottom out of a bottle. You can take that and make a sparkly gem out of it, and you can see the satisfaction of what you've done. It makes you feel real good. I'm trying to get more people to realize that they have the creativity within them and to sit down and give it a try. They might be surprising themselves of what they can actually do. They never knew they could do before. And let's see, let's bring it out here first. Let's see, what's our setting? 2.0. Okay. There you go. Lower. Yeah. Okay. You'll be lowering it as you grind away. And that will go fast. And you can put a little pressure down on that. Mr. Zinsky was kind enough to let Jim work with him for two whole days while we were in Oregon. He was traveling back and forth from the Dalles to Kennewick, which is a drive of about two hours, and he said it was worth every moment in the car. We're working on a video of Jim's faceting adventures. I think it's going to be really fun. I hope you'll enjoy it too. Thanks to Mr. Zinsky for sharing all his knowledge and skills so generously. Thanks for joining us and keep on doing.